Hey, what's up, YouTubers? How's everyone doing? Yeah, I've been good. Happy New Year, happy 2013. Good to know that's uh, finally turned into the New Year, and that uh, I hope everyone's New Year celebrations have been good, and that their Christmas has been good. Mine's been good. I've probably said before I stayed over at my brother's during Christmas and do very much. Got to see that film The Hobbit, though there's still other plenty of films I haven't seen yet. Well, I've made some New Year's resolutions and one of them is making sure I don't end up with bad girlfriends, of course, as I have done in somewhat in the past. And I hope to make sure I don't end up with the wrong people, as it were. In, in other words, trying to avoid trouble and bad influences that are out there in the world today. Yeah, I heard in the news that Piers Morgan, of course, talking about current affairs, has uh, got lambasted by Alex Jones, who he invited onto CNN for a somewhat one-to-one -one, uh, uh, chat debate about the Second Amendment, about you know the right to use guns, and the fact that the president wants to. Uh, to get rid of guns once and for all, being that Piers Morgan was anti-gun. And of course, uh, they were thinking of ch changing the Second Amendment or scrapping or something like that or whatever I heard. And um, in Alex Jones's defence, he then completely kind of like let out a tirade of like, God, uh, God knows what, uh, upon Piers Morgan, literally, and um, so I feel bad I'm having the old stage fright here. Bear with me, folks. Uh, basically, he just threw a huge ton of abuse at uh, Piers Morgan, calling him a red coat and a agent of the so 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 fascist elite and whatnot. You know, being conspiracy theorists and all that. And um, boy, oh boy, he kind of like. Uh, some would say put Piers Morgan in his place. Not that I like uh, uh, Piers Morgan, but obviously it seems Piers Morgan's hacking scandal past has caught up with him, and there was no way that I think uh, Alex Jones was going to let it, uh, let him go off on that one. So I guess there was no excuse for him. But you know, Piers Morgan was just trying to be professional and polite and courteous, and was just trying to uh, you know ask some questions questions that maybe people felt weren't, I, d I don't know, probably intellectual enough or, and Alex Jones didn't like that and um, probably ex he probably expected a lot more from Piers than he originally uh, thought before uh, before being interviewed uh, with him on the uh, on, on, it, on, on P Piers Morgan's CNN show so I'm being a little bit uh, Nervy. Er, uh, yeah. And boy, oh boy, he blasted, he bellowed with fire and brimstone upon Piers Morgan. They had to end the program there because he was still lambasting at him. Probably, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know, maybe it lasted half an hour, maybe. I don't know. But, boy, oh boy, he definitely gave good old Piers a piece of his mind, all right. Yeah, no one trusts mainstream. Well, obviously, who would trust mainstream media? And I think uh, Piers Morgan, speaking for a heck of a lot of people, obviously uh, n knew what CNN were trying to do. So he wasn't letting them get away with it one bit. He obviously checked the facts, and uh, you know that he had on all those sheets of paper, all those documents he had in his hand. So he was, you know, flapping at uh, Piers Morgan, and all that was funny. Kind of yeah, red coat, blah, 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 you know, something like that. Ah, oh, dear, dear, dear. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know what to make of it, really. I thought it'd be no worse than, uh, you know, was that artist, taxi driver, Chunky Mark, um. Lombar uh, uh, doing the same thing, except uh, lombasting in his taxi uh, cab about uh, the wrongs of the government, Osbornomics, and so forth. And yeah, I heard about the Renseal boys of Cameron and Claire coming up with their, uh, that sort of like midterm 
speech they did in front of all those journalists saying, Ron Seal, it's, it does what it says on the tin! I know, it sounds like I could run for a commercial here. Yes, we are the Ron Seal Boys, and what we do says on the tin, right here. Well, I haven't got the tin with me, really. <laughs> ah, yes, loads and loads have been going on in the media. Yes, I heard about the Australian fires that have been going on, how that family managed to survive round the pier. God almighty. I wouldn't want to be there with all hell, fire and brimstone around me. I think, well, that'll be the end of me. I'll be barbecued, I'll be barbecued and shish kebabbed. Well, just don't mention the word shish kebab. But, you know, it's just like, I don't know, just crazy. Oh, hang on, glasses are going a little bit wonky here. Damn things. Oh, what the hell. Do I look better without my glasses, or do I look better with? I don't know. Uh, the amount of videos you've probably seen me with or without my glasses when I was doing, whether I'm doing drumming or blogging or documentary videos. Don't worry, I will be doing more documentary videos because I'm uh, uh, thinking of doing some more. Just taking a little break from the drum covers. I think I've got a couple of drum covers which I've already done. I'll probably throw up on here sooner or later. But yeah, I'm going to get around to do some more documentary and taking my camera and phone around the house and have a guide to where I live and what I do on day-to-day -day life. I think it'll be more exciting than just doing blogs. I can still do blogs but at the same time film what I'm doing all uh, around about the house, I'll probably try and make it more exciting, because I know you guys probably get, all YouTubians out there probably get fed up with me just sitting on my ass talking to you guys 24-7, hope I'm not being too boring here. Do I look better without the glasses? Well, let's try without and see what happens. I'll just put them down there so I'm not going to damage them, because you know I'm lying. I can be a bit clumsy sometimes. I'll be Oh, that's the problem with me. I'm just so... I admit, I'm just so disorganised. I just have a string of paperwork over that I've been trying to sort out the other day. It's been an absolute nightmare trying to s uh, see where this and that and that ain't worth sourcing my banking papers as well. Oh, like, I've had to take, like, a little bit of also, like, bit of a bank statement also, like, a little banking letter thing over to Certitude Westgate, uh, who I'm working for, of course, and, uh... You know, part time as and when they need me. I think they got me having over them at in early February or l early March, somewhere around that. So that'll be good. You know, for like training people about autism and Aspergers. Yeah, uh, I might do another second Asperger video. I know I d recently threw in a sort of like little annotation update about what they've been doing with DCM, but that's all. I suddenly realised that. All this is to do with the U.S. and that and that will still be known as Asperger's here over in the U.K. because we're not America. They'll be calling it something else, and we'll still be like originally calling it that. So I'm worried. Maybe I've caused a little bit of confusion. I might change or alter it slightly. Um, I don't know what they still call Asperger's over in uh, Australia and other parts of the world. Cause the U.S. is a bit funny, you know, when it comes to the whole insurance companies, but then uh, we all know it's all to do with the bankers, you know, trying to rip people off money and all that, and uh, them trying to privatise everything so they can squeeze more money out of people, make them uh, work for benefits and stuff, which I think is just... Um, I'm not saying it's wrong to earn, obviously you need to earn something, but to make them, you know, slave for it is not right. It's just obscene, really. I don't know how one would define that as unwarranted, you know. I'm not saying I agree with what Chancellor Osborne or the rest of the coalition governments are doing. I don't agree with their austerity plans or terms and conditions or schemes or agendas or anything like that at all, I think. Hey, I, I mean, don't worry, I'm part of the 90 by 9 percent. I'm not, I'm not the 1 percent. No, of course not. Obviously, I am with the 99%. If all of you want to know, yes, I am. Count me in. I do not agree with what our government um, are doing. Originally elected for the people, by the people, for the people. Therefore, uh, therefore, they should be working for the people, not against them. And that, uh, and that includes not trying to miss with free speech or this banning of guns in America or being the US government and trying to mess around with the Second Amendment thing and all that, you know. It's, 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 I don't know, I don't know, it's just like, oh, the US have a low 
as I as I found out, saw like a lower homicide rate with guns, where suicide rate is more high in like parts of Japan, apparently. So I found out through Psyche Truth. Yeah. Ooh, pretty Harry there. Oh boy. Ooh, oh dear. I wonder, I wonder how they deal with lot uh, people suicide there. Oh, what well, Dirty Harry used to say. Harry Callahan from, you know, Dirty Harry. Say, oh well, there goes a few. There he is, quipping again. Oh well, poor suck. Poor man, poor sucker. Yep. Ooh, there goes another one. <laughs> Something like that. You know what? I suddenly realised the tube, the London Underground, as well as the. Well, not the o just the Overground, but the London. You know, officially the London Overground is now celebrating 150 years of running since the 1860s, right? So, it's just made me realise, hang on, the tube's also unfortunately notorious for a lot of societies using it to do themselves in. Like, there was that film with, what, what's his name from The Office, who, with Colin Meaning starred in that film, Free and Out, about suicides on the underground, let alone just ghosts on the underground. Yeah, no doubts we've had that, you know. But, you know, people through a lot of lack of, uh, uh, you know, you get people working on the underground are tired after working there for t on a 12-hour shift, or 24 hours if they're doing a double shift. And must be absolutely knackered, and their mind start. And you know, you know, when you're tired and and eaten properly, sometimes, or maybe they didn't, or maybe, or maybe they use too many stimulants, you know, coffee and whatnot, and plays like he he hellfire on the brain or whatever they've had, you know. And it's dark, it's horrible, it's dingy. Sorry if I'm being very random here, folks, but uh, you know, talking about the London Underground, 150 years of history, ghost sightings suicides, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if the whole London Underground's filled with a lot of ghosts, it, or spirits of that kind. Uh, anything supernatural going on down there. I don't think I want to be there. Let alone it be famous for fil uh, filming uh, 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 scenes where they film parts of that film that John Landis was doing. Oh, was it an American werewolf in London? Yeah, the tube's famous for that. That scene where we'll, uh, uh, trying to get this businessman or or, or Sue uh, and uh, and catches him on the elevator when he's trying to run away from the wolf werewolf that is, yeah, yes, it's, it's famous for that as well being the tube. I mean, God, I mean they did another film based on the tube. What's it called? Creep. That's one creep. Yeah, yeah, you could say yeah that along with American Werewolf, you know, but especially the film Creep, which I know I watched about this. It's like based and he lives in like, you know, in this other part of the underground that was completely sealed and shut off. I don't know why, but they could have used and refurbished it and whatnot. I find that really strange that that part of uh, London Underground is still on, is still ongoing. I don't know. It's, it is strange. It is strange, I suppose. But anyway, I mean, you know, I mean, basically, coming back to the London Underground and not veering off too much into fantasy or sci-fi here, in reality, the London Underground's just changed the way how we've communicated or commuted and how it's connected the countryside, the city, from Essex to Ealing to Hertfordshire and apparently Buckinghamshire, which I'm not that I've been to Buckinghamshire a lot, but I didn't realise it. Ex oh, sorry, I didn't realise it extended that far, and I mean that far into Buckinghamshire, Essex, Hertfordshire, and Possibly, yeah, Ealing and Essex, especially Essex. They forgot to mention Essex. I should know. One time I went with, well, with my bandmates in that band. Well, was it? Uh, I think it was. No, no, it was Alfin Jones. Storm the Dales, Storm the Dales, and I went with them to this recording studio in Essex somewhere. And we used and, and we managed to get all the way there through. Oh, was it the London Underground using the Central Line and went all the way up there, literally. I mean, bloody hell, that's, that is how that the London Underground has managed to, ex you know, it, how it's evolved, how it's expanded, how it's helped with the evolution of mankind to such an extent that man is able to reach anywhere in the world now and to communicate and it's helped expand businesses, okay, the corporate banks and the mainstream media and all sorts and the helping of arts, you know, loads of art and p 
people have commented about, oh, you know, about how, you know, in some ways that they made a lot of poems. Uh, a lot of poems have been shown on the ground. You get loads of buskers. Have, at one point, it was illegal for buskers to use the underground, but they've made it legal now. There's little busker mini places you see in different at uh, uh, different uh, tube stations along the underground, and where they're kind of like playing all sorts of tunes, and you get involved. And you, Laugh and clap along and whatnot. It's pretty cool. It's good. It's good. You, know, you can throw me- money and pay them afterwards. That's good. Not bad. The only time I ever did busking was my ba- with my bandmates Storm the Dales in uh, Brick Lane, sort of like East South East London somewhere. Yeah, I did. Yeah, honest. I got uh, there's there's like photographic evidence on uh, Facebook to prove it. Yep, that's the one. Oh boy, I've been out and about. Uh, before I go on about the tube one more time, I'll say I've been out and about, travelling here and there via 226, and of course using the London Elven Ground, which got me all the way up to Hangar Lane. Yes, Hangar Lane. The 226, funny enough, also goes. And including the 487 as well, you know, that's where Westgate's based, so, um, yeah. Not a bad place, really. I've been to Westgate's, you know, where the Sirtu's based, and it's kind of like a very grand building. Very grand, very sort of like very business, posh business type elegance to it in a way, but very nice, very well conditioned. I mean, it's a, it's a very nice building on the inside as well as the outside, very well constructed. The architecture, no doubt, would have been very good, yeah. So to be random, coming back to the underground, going back to the point. You know, the underground's changed the way we travel, how we wor- uh, the way we work, the way we live. Just basically, practically everything, really. Technologically, you know, you've seen loads of different people get get on and off on the underground throughout the years. The weird, the wacky, the the wonderful, the absolute bizarre. Well, I would say the underground itself throughout 150 years has been there, done that, seen it all, including the peep, including the, and also not. Let's not forget the people who've dedicated their lives to working. Over the years, you know, I know one of my, I think one of my brother's friends who used to live in the same street over in Holston uh, works for the London Underground now as a tube driver. So that's pretty cool for him, and I wish him all the best success in the future. Hope it all turns out the way he, uh, he hopes for it, you know. So it's not too, it's not too bad, really. It's not too bad. I mean, hell, I'd love to work for, the, uh, for London Underground. That'd be like a, you know, that'd be like a real honour. Yes, I'm out of work. I'm trying to look for a job. If I get one, I've got myself into a new band now by the name of Zero of Lumber Z. Going to be meeting up with them next Thursday to have a jamming session. Uh, I think they've been like, advertising on Commentary for uh, for a while now. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping to uh, meet up with them, see what they like, personality, and all that. Hope it all works well. And I heard f- about four or five of their tracks on SoundCloud. They're very good. Very good. Sorry, I'm trying not to like wobble all the time because I know that for a lot of you tubians when they see some of my videos, that must be absolutely a pet peeve. So I do apologise for that. You know, it's just a part of my autism and maybe sometimes a bad habit even that. Oh, you know, I'm going to be rocking back and forth, stimming. It's sti- it's stim- it's stimming slash soothing behaviour in a way, or stimming as we call it. You know. Uh, if you're unsure about that, just check out my Asperger video when you've got the time. You know, you don't have to watch all of it, you can just watch the best ta- highlights on it if you uh, want about that, you know, so. You know, go ahead, go ahead. You can't miss it, you can't miss it, it's on my YouTube page somewhere, so. When you have the time, just uh, look it up and go on, or should I carry on about, nah, I think I've done, gone on about the London Ground, but yeah, you know, if you ever want to learn about the uh, London Underground's history, just go to the London Transport Museum in Covent Garden, you can't miss it. Tell you all about the history of the last 150 smackaroonie years. Come to think of it, I wonder how many millions or trillions of money has accumulated the last 150 years. How, how, from then to now, has it had an effect on our deficit? And also generating money for, uh, uh, to the ta- uh, that the taxpayers ha- Actually, taxpayers have helped to generate a lot of money for it during the last 150 years. Good grief. In billion, uh, billions, possibly trillions of revenue. Well, trillions a bit 
far fetched, but I'll say definitely billion. A uh, billions would probably be better. How many zeros is that? Probably the power of three, maybe four, maybe five zeros, or six. Probably six. I could be wrong. Could be six or sixty billion. Wow. Oh, why am I saying sixty billion? I don't know. I'm just using the uh, power 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 numbers there, you know, to give you uh, an account or big a metaphorical example of like how much it costs. I don't want to, you know, insult one's intelligence here. Or, um, but for those who don't know what, what that is, I'm trying to explain to it practically as best as possible. Yeah. So um, yes. One of the famous pieces that has made London, being the UK, very well, especially London, the UK, they sent uh, uh, sent to the UK down from. I don't think they've ever thought of trying to expand the tube beyond London. They almost did when it comes to places like Hertfordshire, or Essex, or Buckinghamshire, or Ealing, or where else. Oh, I don't know. It's Bit of a mystery, really. Bit of a mystery. Oh yeah, bit of a mystery. Um, yeah. Yep. Being the winter nights, it's getting more. Well, it was getting more and more darker. I don't know. I think we have just about par passed the longest day, and the long winter's night day, or something like that. So um, it might start to get lighter soon, uh, to four or five o'clock as we move more and more towards the sun. You know, in an oval, in an oval type, so in in an oval type way, not like a huge circle. It's more of an oval type of way. You know, so, uh, uh, you know what orbits orbits are like. Not that our planets have been knocked out. Apparently, uh, oh, was it that? There's that uh, the BBC television pr program series, that new one with what was it that comedian and that guy from Dream. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's called uh, Stargazing. That's the one, Stargazing Live. I've been watching the last couple of nights. It's very good. And we like showing, you know, photos of Mars and what our planets are like, especially Mars. That once upon a time it used to have a magnetosphere, and it's but all that sudden that broke down because the core of Mars stopped. It it became uh, like, and maybe it'll end up like in that film, the old Total Recall of. Uh, of Arnold Schwarzenegger, where they discovered the reason that core stopped, uh, what happened to the core after it stopped and lost its magnetosphere, that became a big, huge bowl of ice, and there was like loads of oxygen and all that, and uh, yeah, yeah, and and, and as, uh, who knows, it might end up in that situation. But coming back to what Mars is all about, that you know, it, it used to, it's got life. It's got like microbes, you know, like bacteria, Martian bacteria on the surface of Mars. They're hoping to send. Well, they've already sent like a probe. Well, they're hoping to second send a second one. And who knows? Maybe even try to. I don't know. I know. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking with all these elite governments, they're thinking of sort of like uh, colonizing planets. You know, like. Like oh was it Mars Intelligence like in that film Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger not the one with Colin Farrell yeah everyone's hoping it doesn't end up in that sort of situation in, in, in the future in the next fifty or eighty years so well sounds a bit far fetched I suppose if that wasn't enough they also have done other films about Mars like Mission to Mars or 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 the Red Planet with um, oh, I know his name. I know the actor's name. I know him very well. Starred in Batman. Ah, Batman Forever. Ah, oh, God, I know his name so well. I know his face. Oh my God, I can't believe. My mum loved this actor. He, uh, found him very sexy. He also starred in Top Gun with Tom Cruise. Also starred in that film Top Secret. Someone please remind me, because I feel like I'm going brain dead here. Help. Oh God. My memory's going. No, it's not Alzheimer's, and it's def not dementia. Well, they're both the same thing, really. I think I'm just. I, I, I think I've been suffering lo loads of lack of sleep. I met during Christmas and during Christmas festive season. I've been staying up too late, and all those late nights from way back during my te early teenage years are finally catching up with me. Yep. I know what you're thinking. Yes, he needs to go to bed early. I know. I know. Ah, oh, I know who his name is, and I can't remember it. It's so frustrating. Starred in Willow. 
I'm not going to look it up because that would be cheating. I know who his name is. Oh my god. Well, if I'm unsure, I can look it up now. Oh god. I'm so, ter I'm so terrible. Really, I am so terrible. Very, very... Oh, my memory's just gone downhill. I used to have a... Br Seriously, I used to have a brilliant memory back in the day. But now it's like... Oh, God, it's gone downhill. Oh, no. Maybe this is... Maybe it's not because it's gone downhill. Maybe it's because I need to do some brain training. Yeah. What the fuck? No, 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 no! What have I done? What have I done? Oh, what have I done? Oh. Okay. Here we go. Sorry. Is this still working? Is it still working? Here we go. Oh god. For a minute I thought I um for a minute I thought I lost recording here. Sorry about that folks. Ugh, I hate it when that happens. Not funny. Not funny. Um yeah, not funny at all. Okay, so what am I looking for? Oh uh, what's his name? Someone please remind me. Oh god. Val Kilmer, that's his name. Oh my god, I overlooked it. I overlooked... Oh god, hang on, sorry about that. Oh god. I overlooked his name, it's actually named Val Kilmer. It was right un under my very nose. I know, and he had, I think this obviously means I'm going to have to get some more sleep, or maybe revise all my information and knowledge and experience of what I know about all the actors and films I've ever known. I've just gone downhill in the last five or ten years, I reckon. Back in the day, when I was in my teens or early twenties, I, uh, from my teens up to my early twenties, I just had such a fantastic memory. But it was like after twenty-five, apparently, that's when your memory's in its prime. But after 25, apparently, it's all downhill. And I think my memory's just going downhill now. Or just that I need to do some brain training, which will help me retain everything. Probably through the powers of meditation, and... Well, I'm going to have to do a lot of meditation, or yoga, or something like that, to really... Or maybe just get some more sleep. I think I just need more beauty sleep, yeah. That's what I need, that's what I need. Yeah, yeah. It's a funny thing, memory. But then you remember. You know, but then some people, even when they're uh, uh, older in their fifties or seventies or eighties, some being geniuses have a fantastic memory. So maybe age doesn't really matter. To be honest, I don't think age matters at all. I think it's just that I've become very lazy, and uh, I think I've become a little bit lazy, and maybe I need to do more brain train by doing more brain games and just like. Because I got like quizzes and stuff like oh this um, what is it this uh, brain games for dummies yeah the sort of, like full dummy seri uh, book series I got and no that does not mean literally I'm a dummy thank you very much oh sorry this video is going over I'll finish in a minute or two um yeah uh oh dear. I guess there's still plenty of movies out there I want to see. Maybe I might see one tonight or tomorrow. No, actually, no, 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 no. correction. I uh, can't see one tomorrow because I'm going to be going over to a friend's house this weekend, so I won't be able to do any more vlogs or... But I could probably cut, throw on a couple of drumming videos before I, uh, before I call it a night. Um, yeah. Anyway, things have been going on well in my life. I recently went to my psychology appointment today before I went to that... Westgate thing, and then I went off to Munn Cup just to drop off something, but they told me to send it back because I needed to fill in a few more things on this form or something, so get around to doing that as soon as possible. Alright, uh, I guess I'd better wrap it up then. This is going over three minutes. Ooh. We're not over three minutes just yet, but hey, at least it's worth it. I don't mind long blogs, so as long as I make them interesting with a lot of fact for information. So yes, the actor who played in Batman Forever as one of the Batmans was, of course, Val Kilmer, yes. You know, he sees he's dialed in dozens of movies. One of my mates says he's become a bit arrogant, full of himself now. Being egocentrical, I guess. He doesn't see him in a lot of movies anymore. He's more in sort of like B-movies, more like Hollywood's just almost forgotten him. I don't know, I guess it was after doing films like Batman or The Saint that he just... Batman Forever... That he just um just lo he just he just he just lost a lot of work. I don't know. Must have been something he did wrong, but anyway. 
Ah, I guess I better wrap it up on this one. Until the next time, my dear YouTubians. Uh, it's ta ta for now. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next edition. Hmm. Bye bye.